Hi everyone, this is Kylie from Stamper's Workshop. A few weeks ago I made a card using a lettuce background and I had some inquiries as to how I made it. It's really simple and I thought I'd show you. Start by taking some stitched rectangle dies and making a frame. I've used the second and the third largest and I use some post-it notes to hold them in place when I'm running them through my die cutting machine. So hopefully they end up being relatively even. Uh, keep the inside though because you can use that for another project. I won't be using it for today's card though. Then I just take another strip a panel of cardstock and I cut strips about five millimeters in width. Now I've, the next step is to add adhesive to this frame. I've done this a couple of different ways. The first time I did it I just used seal and this time I thought I'd do something different and I used liquid adhesive. And the first time I did it too, I also sort of kept the frame in position on my grid paper and, and sort of marked out an even gap between each of the strips. This time I sort of, I don't know why, I sort of winged it a little bit, just eyed it just to see how it would go. So it just shows you can do it either way. I also, the first time I was a bit more diligent in making sure the cardstock that I used sort of, I didn't have as much overhang on each side. I'm quite sure I, why I did it this way, but anyway, I did. Um, I, then you can see I'm just going back to add adhesive over the top where the strips are. And that's because I don't know where I'm going to end up positioning these pieces. And so I just wanted to make sure that I had glue in all the right places. Now don't worry that there's glue everywhere because it will dry and it will kind of get a little bit tacky. So, um, and you're going to put, stick that side down anyway. So it doesn't really matter. As you can see, I just made my framework. It's just, It really is as simple as that. You can make the spaces as big or as little as you like. You can make them a little bit more even than I did it. Just up to you. All you need to do now, see, you can see the framework already. Pop that aside and let it dry. Don't, don't begin to cut it apart or anything now. Just give it a really good chance to dry. And while that dries, we move on with the rest of the elements of the card. I start by stamping out the main floral image from the Blessings of Home stamp set. That stamp set has turned out to be one of my favourites. Do you guys like it? I just think it's so pretty. Of course, I like colouring and it's it's got a lot that you can colour. Um, but of course, you don't have to. We've seen plenty of examples where it's just been stamped in the one colour. But I like you can cut it out. You can pop up just elements of it. You can just, you can do lots of things with this image basically. Anyway, I'm using my favorite color, the granny apple green for the leaves, both the light. Then I come in with a little bit of the dark for the shadows and, and uh, then I go over it again with the light just to sort of blend it together. Um, some people, because it's such a small image, some people might start with just the dark colour. So just add the dark bit and then sort of blend it out with the light. It, whatever works for you. Um, I kind of change it up a little bit. For some some of these bigger images, I'll just do this, the light, then dark, then light. But if it's a smaller image, I might just start with the dark and, and just do the light. But I just love how... I, I know I've sped it up double speed and I probably could cut some of this out, but I really do like seeing how it starts to build and you just start to get that dimension. Colouring is my happy place. After I finish the leaves, I'm going to start colouring the smaller flowers and I'm going to do them all in pale papaya. I'll start with a coat of the light pale papaya and then I'll add the dark in the areas that are sort of indicated by those lines there that they're darker and then I just go through again and add the light pale papaya over the top. You can see that I'm just sort of scratching in the color really. You don't have to be really exact. In fact I find it better don't color right to the edge. edge. Have that sort of little bit of white there so it that helps sort of give the light. So you use the dark one to show the depth and the, the white gives that light. Um, it's about around here sometime that I realize 
I'm coloring away going oh I really like this and then I realize that there's a flower there just I've missed so after I finish this I come back in get my light again and color that in go back with the dark and then go over it again with the light and then there's always one element I find that I forget do you guys do that as well so as I'm coloring I'm like oh I forgot to add the dark to that so I'll go through again you can also see too I've come over with the dark again it just wasn't quite as deep a color that that I wanted so I've just gone over it again and you can do that again as you as you need to right for the next step I'm actually using smoky slate um, that's because I kind of want it to look a little bit like it's got sh shadows on a white flower so I'm using just the, the light smoky slate over just over the, where the lines are and then I'm coming in with the dark smoky slate sort of really close to the lines so really close to the middle so that's where it would be much more shadowed and then just because that's quite a dark grey and it's a little bit darker than I had wanted because as I said I was looking for it to look like a bit more of a, a white flower I then come in with the colour lifter to sort of really soften it you still have that depth but it's just not quite as dark right the next thing I'm coming in with is the daffodil delight for the centres of all of the flowers sometimes I might do different centres for the different flowers but this time I've decided to use just daffodil delight so I'm doing a coat of all the light and then I'm once again I'm coming in with that dark colour just to add that extra depth and once I've done that I come back in and I go over the top with the light and then it's time to do the die cutting. I'm using the coordinating flowers of home die cut and I'm cutting out the image. I do use a post-it note most times when cutting out something like this because I would hate to do all that colouring and have the die slip, especially if your plates are getting a little bit warped. Okay, now I'm sort of cutting out a whole bunch of elements um, because I'm not quite sure what I'm going to need. So I just sort of pick out a whole selection run them through on the off cuts of my panel and then I'm going to do the same dies but this time on vellum because I thought a combination of those might be nice and I'm really not sure what I'll need and what will look good. Okay because this is a sympathy card I just wanted a really sweet sentiment and so sorry for your loss seems to be a really nice one. It comes from the prized peony stamp set um, I'm stamping in Versamark and then adding white embossing powder. Don't you love watching how it melts? It looks so good. The picture this dies are awesome circles with stitching on it. And I don't think I've used them in the one category in as the one die yet. I just keep using them to cut out sent sentiments. Okay, we're back to our letters now. It's all stuck now. So it's time to cut off all those overhanging pieces. You won't need them for anything. I mean, I guess you could keep them if you like to keep all your scraps, but otherwise just pop them into the recycling. Just make sure you can see I have just a little bit of an offcut hanging over there. So make sure you cut off all of the bits. At this stage, I decided that I do want to have a really soft background behind my lattice panel. And the easiest way I thought of to do was to do it was to pop the lattice piece in place get some post-it note tape and create a frame lift out my border it did leave a little bit of adhesive because you know I've got all that adhesive that's a bit tacky on the back so just make sure you wipe that off otherwise it will be there permanently then using a blending brush I've chosen some pale papaya ink just blot it off over the side and just add as much color as you would like start off really softly because you can always add more color but obviously you can't take it away and then you can see I've got this really nice framework and those post-it note pieces I can use that again and again for different things now you could obviously just adhere this panel straight onto your card stock but I decided to pop it up so I went through and just added lots and lots of dimensionals and I also cut strips 
just to sort of make it easier to stick it down. I've saved you from having to watch this. I've just cut it all off, but basically I popped a lot of dimensionals on and then I had to take off all of those backings and then they were everywhere. I think they're still floating around a few of them anyway. And then just position it into place. And that's as simple as it is and it looks so effective. And now you just have to add your elements on the top. So I just positioned them where I thought they might go, added some post-it notes because obviously it's popped up so you don't want your elements to sink down in. So then I just put some liquid adhesive. I usually use seal but I thought a liquid adhesive might be better in this case. So now that I've added the sentiment I'm coming back in and I'm adding the main floral element as well. So I'm just repeating the same process. I popped the the mini stamp and dimensionals where I thought they would be best to go in the gaps there and then I've just plonked on a heel heap of liquid adhesive. There's kind of another benefit to using the liquid adhesive because I'm now coming back with those elements that I dark cut earlier so I can just pick out the pieces that I think I like and I've got that wiggle room because it's not immediately dry so I can sort of put it in and then go oh no that's not quite right and I can sort of move it around and I've got that time before the glue dries. And I do end up using a combination of both the basic white cardstock elements and the vellum elements. I've kind of felt that if I'd have used all basic white cardstock, it just might have looked too, like too much. The vellum's so much softer. And once I'm happy with the positioning of all of those elements, I'm coming in with a wink of Stella, of course. I tend to use Wink of Stella on all of my floral elements. In fact, usually most cards have it, let's be honest. And I like the fact that it just gives that soft shimmer. It's not a real glittery effect. It just sort of, it just sort of catches the eye without being too obvious. And I tend to only put it onto my petals and flowers rather than the leaves. The final touch of my card is to add some pearls. I really like these pearls. They're so pretty and they look so great on this card. And this card is now finished. I hope you enjoyed learning about this lattice technique. All of the supplies used to make this card can be found linked in the description box below or you can find them on my blog at stampersworkshop.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.